Hey, it's Lee Halliday, and we are going to be building a scoreboard today. We are going to be building a little game where we enter the number of digits of pi that we've memorized. For me, it's like it's like three of them. It's hardly anything. And however many you get, that's your score, and we're going to put that in a scoreboard, and we're going to use Redis to store and basically rank the scores inside of our scoreboard. And we're going to be doing all of this inside of Next.js, so we're going to be playing with React and serverless functions at the same time. So let's get started. Here's what we've got so far. It just says Redis scoreboard. So we're going to pop into our component. And let me just give a quick overview of what we've got so far. We're importing use state because we're going to keep track of what they've entered for their, their name and the digits of pi that they've entered. We've got pi right here up until like a hundred um, digits or something like that and then I've just got a replace function that's getting rid of these spaces. We're going to be implementing this function called points that will basically calculate how many digits of pi you've entered correctly and then down here is our react component where we'll be putting in some inputs and stuff like that. So why don't we just um, start by adding an h1 and we'll say like pi digits being our h1 tag. And I've got a couple styles inside of um, this home module. So we're going to be using these as well. You see I've already added container here. So we'll just add a class name of styles.heading to that. It won't really change much, but I'm actually planning another video after this where we'll convert this from just normal HTML to use React Native DOM. So I'm sort of setting things up knowing where I want to be going, but that'll be a different video. So after this, why don't we just put some inputs? So this will be an input of type text and we will have to give it a value. So our value is going to come from state so we'll say const name and set name is equal to use state. And we'll just set it to Lee so that I don't have to keep typing my name over and over again. So that's the name there. And then on change, we've got an event that will give us the value to set the name. So that would be e.target.value. And we should have a beautiful input showing up. We can just add a quick style to it using styles.input. Oh yeah, and on to our next. So now we want to give the, the user an opportunity to enter the number of pi digits they've memorized. So we'll just do the same thing, input of type text. Our value will be something we'll call value. So we'll just say value and set value is equal to use state and we'll just started off at 3.14. So same thing on change gives you an event for you to set the value. So that would be e.target.value and we'll give it a class name as well, styles.input. Save that and we can change this and, and whatnot and it's, it's looking good. Okay, so next we want a button to be able to basically submit this score so we'll do a button and we'll say submit, beautiful. We'll give a class name of styles.button, um, oh yeah. And now we basically want to capture the, the on-click event so that we don't really even need anything from it. But what we want to basically do at this point is calculate the score. I suppose we could do this on the server. Um, and that would probably that would probably make sure that nobody can tamper with this. So if I were actually doing this for my job or something like that, I would calculate the score on the server, I would say. But for this, we're just going to do it right here in the browser. So we're going to want to get the score and we'll call points for that. and We'll pass in the value. And why don't we just console.log to see that we are calculating it correctly. So that will just show up in the console here. And we have to go up and implement this. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to start with a score of zero. And we're going to use our trusty friend, the for loop, to iterate through each character um, that they've entered. 
So we're going to want to do um, i is less than the value, I think you can do length. How do you do string length in JavaScript? String length. It's just length. Oh yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. And then we're going to um, increment one every time. So what we want to do is basically, if we're at the very first character, we want to compare my character to the actual one, so like three in this case. So what we'll do is we will say um, pi dot, um, what's it called again, char at i, so that would be zero. Let's check if it's equal to the value char at i as well. So if those are equal, we're going to say score is add one. If they're not equal, we basically return the score because that means you've reached the point up until you've matched. Time to get out of here and return that score. If somehow you get through um, your whole thing, well, that's the score. So return score at the bottom here as well as like a, as a fallback. I suppose you could like break from this loop as well. Um, Return in this case does the same thing, so that's fine. Let's see if we got it. So this would be three, so the, the dot counts as a point. So um, 3.14, oh yeah, one, blah, 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 five. So I got up until the fifth one correctly. I could keep going and add a couple more. And this is actually my knowledge of pi. This is where it ends right here. Six, so my high score would be six if that's the case. Um, okay, so we've calculated the score in the browser, but we want to go and store that in our Redis scoreboard. So we're going to work on posting that data to a serverless function that exists up here in API scores create. And it just doesn't really do anything at this point, it just returns success but we need to post the data to this serverless function. So for that, we're going to use fetch, and I'm going to convert this to an async function, and we will just say await fetch, and we are going to post to API scores create, and then we basically need to set up um, just the fetch correctly so that it's posting data, so method post um, let's set up some headers. We want the content type to be application JSON so that it goes up in the right way. And then we got the body of our request. And that would be, we want to send up the name. And I can just do that because that's the, the name here. And we want to send up the score as well. But you can't send up an object. You actually have to JSON.stringify it like that. So we're going to post this up. Now let's hop over to the back end and let's just make sure that we can capture the data that's coming from our browser. So we will say const name and score is equals to rec.body and let's just console.log that so that we can make sure that we're receiving it correctly. So if we were to send that up, go to this console, we can see that we're receiving name and a score of four. So, so far so good, but now we need to put this into Redis, which will store our actual scoreboard. So for that, I'm gonna head over to Upstash and set up an Upstash Redis database. So I'm gonna um, come here and create a database name. So let's call this the Pi Masters. Uh, 3D, Pi Masters 3D. We're going to put this thing in Amazon North Virginia. Let's make it SSL and strong consistency. And this will just take a few seconds. And then once we get up here, we basically need um, the thing we want to capture is basically how do we connect to this Redis database. Um, the easiest one for our purposes right now is actually to hop over to Go and copy this whole connection string right to the end. 
So the key things you're looking for here, Redis should have two S's. That signifies that it's the TLS uh, SSL connection. And basically there's colon and your password. So there's no username, it's just a password. The server, um, URL, then the port. That's everything in there. That doesn't really matter though, but we're gonna hop over and store this in an environment variable. So I've got it in .env.local. This is in git ignore, so you wouldn't commit that, but you can just paste this in. I'm going to restart my server so that as it boots, you can see here, loaded end from .env.local. So that means I've got this and I can access it now. So I want to now create an instance that connects to Redis that I just set up. So I'm gonna say Redis uh, with a small r is equal to a new Redis and I can actually just pass in this environment variable. So we'll just say process.env. Dot that one. Cool. All right, so how do scoreboards actually work in Redis? Redis provides a number of different uh, like data structures you can use. If we actually just go to the Redis, you can see I was researching. Of course, I don't have this uh, memorized. But um, what we're going to be working with today is basically something called zadd to begin with. So all of these like z, there's you can see there's a ton of them. Z range, z um, rev range, zev member. There's all, all sorts of like z functions. There's there's uh, z rev range, rev rank, rank. What do they all mean? So first of all, they are a set, meaning there can only be one value per like key it basically creates a, a unique um a unique well a set is a unique array so you you put values in and as soon as there's a duplicate it ignores them but the z ones are ranked so as you add sort of members with their score it will rank them in the order according to their score um, so we're going to start adding our score from our user and we'll cover some of the, the other different um, ranked set um, functions you can call from Redis in a second. So what we need to call is zadd, and we will await that. So we'll say redis.zadd. And where are we gonna store these things? You might have multiple different leaderboards. We're just gonna call this scores. And then the next one you need is basically the actual score. So that would be this here. So we're just going to put this in. Um, now, was it coming up as a number? Yes, it was. So we don't have to parse it, I don't think. And the next thing we want to put in is basically what is the name of our person? Or if, they're, if you're using a database, it would be like their ID or something like that. Like a unique identifier for the person that has the score. So for this, we are just going to use name like that. So that will put this person inside of our ranked set, in other words, our leaderboard. And maybe for now, we just wanna find out where does this person rank in terms of the full leaderboard. So for that, we are going to get the rank by calling another Redis function called zRank. But I'm actually not gonna use zRank. What that gives you is basically Let's say if you're in first place in this scoreboard, you would have, um, and there's 10 people in this scoreboard, you would have a, a Z rank of 10. Um, and basically the last place person would have a Z rank of zero. I wanna flip that. If you're in last place, I want it to say you're in 10th place. If you're in first, I want it to say you're in, in first or zero. I'm not sure what it'd give you, but for that we use rev rank to basically reverse it, its default order that it gives it to us in. And then we pass in the name of the leaderboard we're using and the key for our member. So this would be their name. So that gives us the rank and we could just return that in our response. So why don't we try to make sure that it's working? So let's go back to here and we will enter in 3.14, go to network, Okay, rank zero. Uh, there is only one person, so, so that makes sense. Let's enter in uh, Peter Pie. 
and Peter Pi is not so good at Pi, so just we'll put that, and you can see that Peter is 1. If we put this smart person in, 3.1415, put that in, they are now in first place, um, which is 0. So we've got three people in our leaderboard now, but how about we actually show them? That would be pretty useful. So we're just going to work now on another serverless endpoint that will return us the scoreboard of everyone in it. So we're going to start in the React side of things, and we're going to be using use SWR hook to go and fetch the scoreboard from our backend. So we will say const data and something called mutate, which we'll cover in a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to say use SWR. So it wants a key, so we can just say scores. And then it wants like a, a fetcher function. So a fetcher function is the thing that's actually going to make the fetch request to the server. So what we can do is just say const fetcher is equal to an arrow function that calls fetch to API scores list. This one here that we'll take a look at in a second. And then it takes the response and it converts that response to JSON. That's all the fetcher is. And um, what we could just do is maybe before we get into that a little bit more, let's figure out like what is this doing so far? So what I've done is I've set it up to just return a hard-coded list of scores. So that's what it's going to return. We'll show it, and then we'll come back here and we'll implement it to go actually load them from Redis. So we'll come down here and we'll say if there is data, then we want to do an unordered list. And in the unordered list, we are going to map the data. So each one will be an item. And the list item must have a key, so that would be item.name. And then our value here could say maybe item.name and then their score, like that. Sweet. So there we got it. We got Patty, Lee, Ebert coming back in, in that order. You can see that it's, um, if I switch this to be list, it's making that request and it's getting the result here. Um, so I put in this mutate here. Let's say you add a new score to the score list. After you post that and save it to Redis, you're going to want to like update the scoreboard so you can get the latest scores on the screen. So you can just call mutate and if you don't pass in anything, it's basically like a refetch. Like, hey, go make that call again, go fetch the data. So last thing we want to do is come back and implement this actual scores function. So I'm going to leave that as is for a second. We need an instance of Redis, so new Redis, and that's process.env.redisurl. And then I'm going to put the scores in a variable called raw scores. And we're going to await a call to Redis. And what we're going to do is we're going to call Z range. But again, this comes back in sort of like worst to best. We want best to worst. So we're going to switch this up to rev range. And we want the scores from, let's say, the 0 to 10 range like that. And let's just take a look at what it's giving us. So I'm going to refresh this so I can come down. And you can see by default, it just puts them in the correct order. So Smart, Lee, Peter, Pi. But I don't know what their scores are. So there's another option you can pass. It's a string that just says, like, with scores. Refresh. Now you get, like, name, score, name, score, name, score. But... I want it like this. So I'm going to write a quick little function that will convert it from an array of name score, name score, name score to look like this. 
So I'm going to say let score, actually I can say const scores is equal to an empty array. We're going to use our buddy the for loop again. So let i equals zero. i is less than raw scores um, dot length. And then I'm going to increment i. And typically you just increment by one, like zero, one, two, whatever. But we want to go two by two in this case. So we're going to say uh, plus equals two. So what we're going to do is we're going to push a new score onto the scores array. And so you can do that with const because you're not reassigning the variable, you're just mutating the array. And what we're going to push in is name. So that would be raw scores at i. And then we want the score as well. So that would be raw scores at i plus one. So like the one beside the name. Um, you can see though that it's a string, so we're just going to parse int it. Parse int in base 10, like that. And then if I actually just delete everything, come back here and refresh, you can see that I'm getting the actual scores from my Redis scoreboard right now. So let's put someone else in here, let's put Ebert. Uh, let's give Ebert a really good score. So what would pi, shoot, copy and paste. Let's give him this many scores. So paste that in for Ebert. I'm going to submit it. And you can see because I called that mutate, it updates the scoreboard immediately after saving it in Redis. And then when it mutates it, it calls that code we just built, which goes and gets the range of scores between 0 and 10 in reverse order so that we have the best score at the top with the scores not just the names or IDs of our the people in our scoreboard and then we iterate through and put them in the right order. So that's everything I wanted to cover for this video. It's basically how to use Redis to build a simple scoreboard. In this case it's for a game where you enter the number of digits of pi that you that you know. I'm going to basically pause this and record another one right now where I convert the HTML I wrote in this video to use React Native for web as an intro to what that whole thing is and, and some of the differences between just normal HTML and DOM versus React Native web. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye.